So it was only a matter of time before I rebuilt the Vancouver Canucks. This team's finally got together and they're actually winning games for once. This team should have been winning the past two, three seasons now. Last season, you could say it was a wash. If you don't have a goaltender in between the pipes, then you're basically toast. But Thatcher Demko's healthy, this team's rolling, and they know how to score goals. Brock Bester's officially back. You love to see it. This team's looking pretty solid. And not only has the offense been fantastic, but the defense has been great. And they've also been getting a lot of offense from this man right here who's manning the defense. That's Quinn Hughes. 92 overall he's definitely making a push for the Norse right now and Heronic of course we can't forget about him having an incredible season as well this Vancouver team's legit and they're going to continue to stay legit as long as this man's in between the pipes for you Thatcher Demko in 89 overall he's your guy if you lose Thatcher Demko then you're toast he means that much to this team and with this being a 10-year rebuild of course we got to worry about the future Elias Pettersson I will give you everything you want barring you being reasonable because I don't necessarily want to do 13.2 million for the next eight seasons don't really like that contract we'll come back to this in probably a month or so and then Heronic, what do you want for a contract extension you're gonna be playing some big minutes for us i'm not doing a one-year deal and i don't necessarily want to do an eight by eight but i think we can make something work so how does 7.3 million sound for the next eight seasons i think that's going to work for both sides here we're going to lock you down long term and you're also getting a big payday so who's really going to complain about this deal and then with elias Pettersson, we're going to try this contract right here eight years at 11.5 million i could definitely work with that we're going to throw that over to him we'll see if he accepts and if he does we're getting a steal of a deal now with the rest of these guys here i'm not too sure how many we're going to be bringing back but colson what are you looking for i actually wouldn't mind doing a long-term deal with you what does eight years look like with you you want 1.7 million i'll do eight years at 1.8 million and we'll call it a day here that's going to be a great deal for us he's going to be a top six player for us can't complain with that extension whatsoever so we got the real question is elias paris and we're going to be accepting the deal we offer to him but colson saying yes i'm not too surprised at that one horonic saying yes and elias Patterson, he's sticking with the vancouver connects for the next eight years we have our core locked down long term. So now that we've got the important extensions out of the way, we'll simulate up to the trade deadline. I'm expecting this Vancouver team to be pretty good. And if we are good, then we'll make a few trades here and push for a Stanley Cup. But I don't want to rush it this season and make a stupid move. Also, while the season simulates, I just want to thank you all for all of the support over the past couple of weeks. It's been insane. And let's keep that momentum going and let's aim for 55k subs by the end of the month. Now, would y'all be surprised if I told you that the Vancouver Canucks are currently a great team in the NHL? But now that I'm simulating them in NHL 24, they're an absolute dumpster fire. We're one of the worst teams in the entire league here. I don't even know how it got this bad. Actually, where is our team? I completely passed over them. Oh, here we are right here. 24th in the entire league right above the Tampa Bay Lightning. Are you guys selling Vasilevsky? Because I might have to make a move for him. No, I'm just kidding. Thatcher Demko's our guy for this entire rebuild. Unless something happens and we draft an incredibly good rookie goaltender that ends up becoming a 99 overall. Thatcher Demko's the man and I'm not trading him. There is a very good chance that this statement right here ages poorly and I trade him in the next two seasons. Who knows what's going to happen here? All I know is Elias Patterson's leading the way. He's got 68 points, 27 goals, 41 helpers. JT Miller, he's got 64 points. Did I say 64 for Patterson? I don't even know. He has 68 actually. I don't know. I'm just yapping right now. Quinn Hughes, 55. Kuzmenko, 53. And Brock Besser, 14 goals. Yeah, that's not ideal. The real question is, what do Thatcher Demko's numbers look like? Because I'm assuming they're not that great. They're definitely not. 22 wins here, three shouts, a 909, a 302. We might just have to call this season a wash. Just going to keep it a thousand. So I'm looking at a trade like this where we'd be sending Ilya Mikheyev and Connor Garland over to the Arizona Coyotes. We're going to be picking up JJ Moser and Barrett Hayton. We're going to have to give both of these guys extensions after this season, but I feel like it's going to be worth it because we're going to be clearing up a ton of money here. This definitely is going to be enough, but I'm still going to offer it over in case for some reason it goes through. They want Ilya Mikheyev, but they don't want Connor Garland. You know what? We can get something done here. So instead of Connor Garland, how about I give you Carson Soucy and we call it a deal here? I mean, obviously they're saying no because the trade values don't even match whatsoever. But you know what? A third rounder can always make the difference maker. So here's our 2025 fourth rounder because we don't have a third. I thought we did for some reason, but never mind. Here you go. Here's a fourth rounder. They're saying no, but of course, a seventh rounder is always the difference maker. We know that. So here you go. 2025 seventh rounder, and we're getting this deal done just like that. So that's two massive upgrades to our team. We're clearing up a bunch of cap space. That's going to work out well for us. So this is going to be the next move here. Connor Garland, along with one of our prospects, over to the Buffalo Sabres. We're going to try to pick up Casey Millstat. He's 25 years old, 84 overall. He can play on our second line, maybe even our third line. All I know is we're clearing up money in this deal, and that's exactly what I want to do. They're going to be saying no, but we got draft picks to work with, and I'm not scared to use a few draft picks. So here's a fourth rounder that's probably not going to be enough. It actually might be. Hold on. Is that going to be enough to get this deal done? They're going to be saying no. So we'll do two fourth rounders, and we'll call it a day here. Our pick, along with New Jersey's for 2024, and just 
just like that, we're getting the deal done. And I think those are going to be the only two moves we make here because I don't want to necessarily sell the entire team. But I think with the two moves I did make, we are a better team at the end of the day, as long as we can bring everyone back because we do have to re-sign the three players we acquired. So now that we've acquired those players, we better lock them down and JJ Moser will do five years at 4.3 million. I think that's a pretty solid deal for you considering you're only 23 years old and you're going to continue to get better. So I'm not going to lie, Barrett Hayden's kind of bugging with this contract, three years at $4 million. But you know what? If he can turn into a top six guy for us, that contract might be worth it, but it also might not be. He's 23 years old, so I mean, he has tons of time to develop, but right now, I'm not necessarily loving that contract. And with Casey Millstat, we're going to be doing a similar deal as JJ Moser. We'll do 4.4 for the next four years. I mean, Casey Millstat, the dude's an absolute beast. He definitely can't make this team any worse. The real question is going to be, can these guys continue to develop on our team? Because if they can't, then I just gave out three horrible contracts. But you know what? Stick on the ice always makes the right decision. He has never made a bad move in the history of every rebuild he's done. He has only made good moves. Do not fact check that, nor go look at any of my old rebuilds because I've definitely made a few poor moves. So as I just said, I only make smart decisions. And one of those smart decisions was not trading our first round pick. Because not only are we missing the playoffs, we're one of the worst teams in the entire league here, 25th. 36, 40, and 6. We're scoring three goals a game, but we're also allowing 3.22. Yeah. So we'll take that as a W for stick on the ice. No, great decision by him not trading the first round pick. The other trades we made didn't necessarily help us. So when it comes to our top players, I can't complain. Pedersen, 92 points. JT Miller, he's got 86. Now, Quinn Hughes, I'm hoping for at least a point a game from you. Kuzmenko, I was expecting more from you as well. Brock Besser, we're going to pretend this season didn't happen. He'll bounce back next season. Casey Millstat, what did you do since you joined the team? Honestly, I don't think you really did too much. Eight points in 17 games, definitely not what I wanted to see. Barrett Hayton, what did you do? Probably not too much either. I'm expecting really bad numbers from you. Oh boy. Oh my god. This man had two points in the last 17 games. We might have to trade him. I just gave this man four million dollars. We might be trading you. JJ Moser, what'd you do? No way you had less than two points in the last 17. You had eight. I can live with that. I mean, then again, we are bringing in a new coach next season because Barrett Hayton doesn't fit on any lines whatsoever. We'll get a better coach. He'll have a better fit on some of these lines and we might be able to do something. And then in between the pipes, that's your Demko. I actually don't want to look at your numbers. We're going to pretend I didn't see these. Yep, Thatcher Demko, he had a save percentage of a 940 and a goals against of a 185. Meanwhile, I guess it wouldn't hurt if we looked at the postseason. Dallas is going to be winning the Stanley Cup over the Florida Panthers. So we can't get excited about the postseason, but there is one thing we can get excited about. The draft lottery results and the fact that we're jumping to the number one overall pick. Never mind, we're dropping from eight to nine. We should still be able to get a good prospect though. So I think there's two guys that we could go with here. We can either go with this guy right here, the left defense that was projected seventh overall, but somehow dropped to nine or we can go with Teague Aginla. I know for a fact this man has medium elite potential, but our defense needs help. So we're going to be selecting the defenseman here. Medium elite potential. He's going to develop into a great player for us. He actually might make the team next season. He's already a 78 overall defensive defenseman. This man's either going to be playing second pairing minutes or third pairing minutes next season. All I know is he's making the jump to the NHL immediately. Now it shouldn't really be much of a surprise outside the ninth overall pick. We didn't get any good prospects here. We have terrible scouts and honestly it was a pretty weak draft outside the first round. But considering we did get a medium elite potential prospect i'll call this one a win so when it comes to the re-sign phase i don't think any of these guys are going to be coming back because a lot of them aren't going to be developed anymore tyler myers he's 34 ian cole he's 35 no point bringing them back to the team maybe dakota josh why he's only 28 years old and then the rest of these guys like all the rfas have basically no trade value top nine potential bottom six potential top 6d top 6d ahl potential yeah, none of those guys are actually going to help our team. We're not even going to be able to throw them in trade packages. So all these guys right here are all going to be walking. The only guy I'm considering bringing back is Casey DeSmith because he's an 83 overall backup. How much money do you want though? I'll do two years at $2 million. Actually, I'll do two years at $1.8 million. Why would I give you more than what you're asking for? Then again, I think I've done that already once in this video. So we're just going to ignore that. So Casey DeSmith, ideally you come back. Never mind, you're going to be walking to free agency. But we did bring in our defenseman, so I'll take that as a win. So yeah, the rest of these guys are gone. Actually, what am I talking about? I'll sign this guy right here. He can be our backup next season. I'm just completely ignoring the 23 year old who's a 79 overall. What am I doing? So with the re-sign phase wrapped up, we're moving into next season. Now we gotta start giving out some extensions. And Brock Besser, I'm not really sure if I wanna give you $7 million. How many points did you have last year? Didn't you only have like 40 points or something? Yeah, you had 20 goals, 26 assists for 46 points. And now you're asking for $7 million. I'm not doing that. 
That's just a stupid deal right there. I also can't give Kuzmenko an extension right now. But you know what? We're not going to worry about that because Hollander, he can get one and we're giving him the bag here. Eight years at 3.3 million. How about we do eight years at 3.1 million and we'll call it a day on this deal. That's a fantastic move for us. As long as he develops. If he doesn't develop, then it's a terrible deal. But I mean, you guys have seen the last few rebuilds. You know what Hollander develops into. This is a great contract for us. So as we know, I traded away Carson Soucy last season and we already have his replacement, but I wouldn't mind bringing in another defenseman. So we'll try Matt Waugh to a three-year deal at 2.9 million a bit more than what he's asking for but I want to make sure he joins the team we do also have to fill out the bottom six a little bit here so Oscar Sundquist 1.8 for the next two years I'm not going to complain with that contract and then to round out our free agent signings here we got to bring in one more defenseman so we'll do Sebastian Ajo to a two by two after the few moves we did make here look at the line chemistry plus five on the first line plus three on the second plus two on the third and then plus one on the fourth line this entire team has fantastic line fits across the board here and we're definitely in a much better spot and just look at JT Miller, Pedersen, Kuzmenko plus 5, 86, 96, and a 90. This line right here every single guy is going to be picking up 100 points this season. Meanwhile the defense definitely could use some work here but Quinn Hughes and Hironik I can't complain about that in the first pairing. The second pairing of JJ Moser and our young defenseman is definitely a work in progress here while the third pairing we're just not going to discuss. The two signings didn't really work out for us but hey we can work around it. And with an improved defense, I'm expecting Thatcher Demko's numbers to be better this season, but he did drop to an 88 overall. Is he starting to regress at 28 years old? I hope not, because that definitely wouldn't be ideal for us. And after much consideration, it's time for us to get a deal done. Brock Besser, 6.8 million for the next five years. You have a near perfect fit on the second line, and I'm going to bank on you having a bounce back season. Then again, by me giving out that extension, I'm not sure if we're going to have money for Kuzmenko, but we'll deal with that when we have to. We'll find a way to clear up some cap space. In hindsight, I kind of regret that Brock Besser extension now, because how are we going to bring back Kuzmenko? I have absolutely no clue. I mean, worst case scenario, we just trade him at the trade deadline and we pick up a bunch of young players, a bunch of great pieces that could help this core right now. Then again, Kuzmenko is kind of helping the core right now. So yeah, I've kind of put myself in a tough position here, but we'll work around it. Okay, I'm just going to say this right now. I'm not accepting this deal, but I just want to look at it. I have never been offered a player like John Tavares in a trade from the CPU before. I just want to look at this. $10.6 million. He's an 87 overall. There's no way I'm accepting this deal. He only has 30 points this season. But I just wanted to point that out. I have never been offered a player like John Tavares before by the CPU. It's actually amazing what a good coach and some line chemistry can do to a team. Fifth in the entire league with a 35, 18, and 9 record. Our offense is absolutely flying right now, but our defense even better. 2.6 goals per game. Yeah, those little changes we made definitely made a big impact. And just look at the goal scoring on this team. Incredible. Pedersen, 74. JT Miller, 69 points. Quinn Hughes, 62. Brock Besser, good thing I bet on this man. 59 points this season. Kuzmenko's got 56. Barrett Hayden, 53. Casey Middlestat, 51. The entire team's fantastic. And you know who else is fantastic? Thatcher Demko, 28 wins already. Three shouts, a 919, a 252. Does he have more wins this season than he did last season already? He's one win shy. And just look at these numbers. He went from a 904 to a 919 and a 315 to a 252. A couple changes can make a massive difference, but we already knew that. So this team can definitely compete for a Stanley Cup, so we got to make at least one move. But I think the top six is set. One move to the bottom six could be the difference, though. St. Louis Blues and Kevin Hayes. This could be a very interesting deal if we could get one done. Did this man just get sold? He's off the market now. Great. I was actually about to trade for him. You know what? We still might trade for him. We're going over to the St. Louis Blues and seeing what they want for Kevin Hayes. He could be a nice piece to the bottom six here. We'll only keep him around for this Stanley Cup run. Maybe we'll keep him around for next season. I don't know, depending on how he ages. Kevin Hayes, where are you looking at here? You're an 85 overall, 3.5 million. We can work with that. Do you fit on the bottom six here? You fit on the fourth line. Let's get risky. Kevin Hayes, welcome to the Vancouver Canucks. We're going to get a deal done for you. Now, what are we going to give up in order to bring Kevin Hayes to this team? Couldn't tell you a second rounder and a prospect that's not going to be enough but i'll still offer it over i have absolutely no clue how we're going to bring this man onto the team we're going to have to give up quite a few picks here a second a fifth and a prospect that should be enough to get this deal done i'm going to send it over to st louis they're saying no but the lucrative seventh round pick is going to be the difference maker in this one in 2027 we're really not going to have that many picks i almost gave them our first round pick and then we got offered this deal hold on okay i gotta look at this one Shea Theodore. Actually, we're not going to have money for Shea Theodore, so I'm not making this deal. Now, we're going to decline that trade. 
I would bring Shea Theodore onto the team because that'd be a massive boost to our defense, but we don't have the cap space for him. So we would bring him on for this season. Then we'll have to trade him away next season. I'm not doing that. So here's a lucrative six round pick for 2025 and 2026. We're going to have no picks left. I've been talking for a hot minute here, but now we got the deal done. Never mind. I'm going to have to keep on yapping here. I'll throw another fifth rounder in this deal. We're giving up quite a bit for Kevin Hayes. Like this is way too much for Kevin Hayes, but we're going to win a Stanley Cup this season. So it's all worth it. So with the addition of Kevin Hayes, this is what the forward core is going to be looking like basically it's the exact same with the addition of kevin hayes and i think we have to accept the fact that kuzmenko is not coming back next season unless i can make some moves at the draft to clear up some cap space we're going to be walking away from him so bringing kuzmenko back actually isn't off the table here he wants 7.2 million dollars meaning i could probably get him for about 6.5 million so we're about 2.5 million dollars short not only is the cap going to go up a little bit so we can free up some money that way but we also can trade sebastian aho and that'll clear up another two million dollars meaning kuzmenko is coming back next season unless for some reason his asking price goes from 7.2 million to like 13 then we wouldn't bring him back but kuzmenko there's a possibility you return to this team so the vancouver canucks are going to finish the season out strong here only six points shy first in the entire league we're a fifth here with a 46 24 and 12 record definitely can't complain with what this team did 3.4 one goals per game while only allowing 2.65 we might have been the best defensive team in the entire league we went from being one of the worst in the entire league to the best who would have thought no, like seriously, who would have thought? Because our defense isn't necessarily that great. So Elias Pettersson is him, plain and simple, 45 goals, 49 assists, 94 points this season. Might not be 100 points, but he did pick up 45 goals, so I'm not going to complain. JT Miller, 89 points, and then Brock Besser, the man, the myth, the legend, 76 points. You'll love to see it. What a bounce back season from him. Quinn Yu, 75. Kuzmenko, 73. Hopefully I can bring you back. Also, Kevin Hayes, what'd you do on the fourth line here? I'm not expecting too much from you. 12 points in 20 games on the fourth line. You definitely spark the offense there but just look at these goaltending numbers thatcher demko 36 wins four shots a 921 to 252 but i don't give the slightest crap about thatcher demko's numbers in the regular season because we're in the playoffs now when everything changes here we have the minnesota wild in the first round but i'm looking past minnesota because i'm looking at those eastern conference teams one of those teams are going to be taken on in the stanley cup final okay we lost game one we're going to get swept here i'm calling it right now okay we're not getting swept we're actually making the comeback here the series is tied two to two for some reason reason when I said I'm looking at the Eastern Conference teams and I saw us lose game one getting shut out I had a feeling we were somehow going to get swept here but we actually have a 3-2 series lead can we close out in game six here we're making a massive comeback winning four straight games and we're off to the second round I honestly thought after losing game one three nothing we were about to get swept after saying I was looking past Minnesota so at least that statement didn't backfire on me so after that massive comeback over the Minnesota Wild we've moved on to the second round here and I got to thank Anaheim here taking out the Edmonton Oilers in the first round that's great because I do not want to go against Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl we saw what those boys did in the postseason last year I'm scared of them so as I'm recording this I currently have an Anaheim sweatshirt sitting on my bed so we're going to see if that's either going to bring good or bad luck to us right now it's bringing good luck never mind it's bringing bad luck it brought good luck again we're tied in the series two games apiece i'm just going back and forth i'm saying good luck bad luck it really don't matter game five what are we going to be doing here we're going to simulate through this one we're losing four to one can we bounce back in game six here and then hopefully force game seven it looks like that's exactly what's happening we're off to game seven so i cannot tell you if the anaheim duck sweatshirt is either good or bad luck we're about to find out though i'm going to simulate the entire game here i actually don't know who won I didn't see who scored the final goal. It looks like it's going to be the Anaheim Ducks. Of course, it's Frank Vitrano. Why would it be anyone other than Frank Vitrano? I still don't know if it's Vitrano or Vitrano. Don't really matter. Frankie here is scoring the OT winner, and we're dropping game 7, 6 to 5. That's a tough way to go out. Okay, so this game definitely should not have gone to overtime. Sebastian Ajo with 15 seconds left in the game sent us there. Shout to Ajo. That man stepped up when we needed him to. So I guess the Anaheim Ducks weren't a bunch of frauds because they made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final. Unfortunately, though, they are going to be losing to the Tampa Bay Lightning in seven games. So Elias Pettersson can't really complain with what you did here. 18 points in 13 games. Brock Besser, you only had three goals and you were minus four. That's definitely not ideal. Casey Millstat, minus six. Those numbers just weren't great for the second line. Meanwhile, Trevor Zegers, he's going to lead all postseason scores, 14 goals and 13 assists for 27 points. Shout out to him, I guess. So I can't even explain what happened here. Remember how I was all worried about how we wouldn't be able to bring back Kuzmenko because we weren't going to have the money for him? We now have $16 million in cap space. I don't know where that money came from, but we're going to be doing a three-year deal at $6.4 million. I would do more in three years, 
but then this man wants 10 million dollars i'm not doing that so here's 6.4 for the next three seasons where did all this money come from so as we know i basically had no draft picks for the upcoming draft because i traded them all away we did have two prospects here neither of them were good though but you know what that's perfectly fine because although we've traded a lot of picks away and don't really have any prospects we have a lot of fantastic players and a lot of them are locked in long term now this looks like an incredible deal right here pious suitor three years at 1.7 million you were a fantastic player on our third line so i'd love to bring you back and then d giuseppe I'll also bring you back on a one-year deal at 1.5 million i said that name incredibly wrong but that's perfectly fine i'm also going to sign a lot of these rfas to three-year deals on two-way contracts because why not also i completely forgot atu ratu was on this team we got to bring bro up to the nhl real quick here so after not making too many signs during the re-sign phase we could give out some extensions here but there's no one i actually really want to give an extension to so we're just going to rock with the team we have here we might make a free agent signing or two but right now i can't complain with what this team's looking like 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 kevin hayes i technically could bring him back but he's 33 years old he's going to keep on declining he lost all of his x factors but he plays good minutes on the fourth line so i better keep him around however there is one extension we have to give out here and this is very expensive but i'm perfectly fine with doing it thatcher demko 9.8 million for the next eight seasons you're our man and we already know that also for a backup goaltender this is an incredible deal for an 80 overall i'll make that deal any day of the week so i still haven't figured out why we have 10 million dollars in cap space but i'm not going to complain we're starting with mason appleton two years at 2.2 million the other signing we're making is also going to be a two-year deal it's going to be with alex i follow we're going to do 4.2 for the next two he's going to be a great piece to the bottom six and i think those are probably going to be the only two moves we make because our defense was absolutely incredible i hate you alex i follow with an absolute passion just an absolute l man's how could you do that to me dodger demko thank you for staying with the team but you know what now we got to pick up a different player for the third line so instead of alex i follow we'll do yanni gord we'll do three years actually i don't want to do three years we'll do a two-year deal at 3.6 million i think that's pretty fair for you we're giving you way more than what you're asking for hopefully you'll fail on the third line you can be a nice addition to this team so you know what if it ain't broke don't fix it and we're not changing anything here pedersen jt miller kuzmenko on the first line brock besser barrett hayton casey mills down the second the bottom six here looks absolutely incredible we added mason appleton we added yanni gord they're two nice additions they're going to be helping this team a ton like seriously i don't think this team could really get any better i mean that's a complete lie look at the defense here aho and matt wall ideally we have two guys that have better line chemistry but they were great last season so i'm not going to complain and also this guy bro you already played one season with the team and you didn't develop whatsoever 15 points plus 12 your defensive defense but i'm not really expecting you to pick up a lot of points here but you're still a 79 overall I was thinking you were going to be at least an 83 at this point. I'm giving you enough minutes on the ice. You got to start developing. And then there's one man we never have to worry about. I've said this a million times. Thatcher Demko, he's him. What can I say? This team's ready for another run. We have fantastic offense. We have incredible defense. We have one of the best goaltenders in the entire league. What can I complain about? We'll simulate to the trade deadline like usual. We'll make a couple moves accordingly. Honestly, I'm not really too sure how many moves we can make though, because we don't have a ton of cap space to work with. We also don't have a ton of draft picks because I've traded all of them away. So yeah, let's just see what happens here. So I'm really considering not making a single move here at the trade deadline. We're first in the entire league with a 44, 12, and 6 record. Incredible offense. The best defense in the entire league i didn't think it was possible for our defense to get any better but somehow it did 2.42 goals allowed per game incredible all right so i think jt miller's on pace for 60 goals this year because this man has 42 at the 62 game mark i mean that's actually really bad math because that means he has to score 20 goals in his next 20 games he's on pace for 50 that's for sure pedersen he's got 79 points kuzmenko he's got 69 but thatcher demko your numbers are the ones i really want to see 32 wins five shots a 920 and a 242 i'm absolutely speechless i didn't think it was even possible to see these types of numbers in a simulation but here we are now with all that being said do we make any trades here because the team's virtually perfect there's nothing wrong with us whatsoever okay so do y'all want to see something incredibly stupid i was thinking you know what we'll bring in john carlson because he has a perfect fit on the second pairing he'd be a massive upgrade for this team and probably help us win a stanley cup however we can't get this deal done because we'll be over the salary cap for next season i wonder what kind of contract the washington capitals gave john carlson he's 36 years old he's already declining he's getting paid eight million dollars right now he's probably only getting paid maybe six six seven million max 
No, they gave this man a two-year extension at $9.6 million. He's getting paid almost $10 million at 36 years old. Sometimes this game confuses me. So the fact that we can't get John Carlson, I think we're just going to call it here. We're not making any trades. The team's incredible right now, so why would we change anything up? Let's just get to the end of the season. At the end of the season, it should be no surprise that the Vancouver Canucks are the best team in the league here. 56, 18, and 8. Our offense was incredible. No surprise there. We already knew that. 3.71. But goals allowed. We allowed less than 200 goals, meaning our goal Goals against was 2.32. The next closest was probably like 2.8, 2.73. We were easily the best defensive team in the entire league. The fact that we were this good still surprises me. I really don't understand how we were that good defensively. I will say there is one thing I'm very disappointed in. The fact that in the final 20 games, JT Miller scored four goals. Bro had 42 goals in 64 games and finished the season with 46 goals. What happened to you? Like seriously, what happened? How did you only score four goals in 20 games? That doesn't even make sense. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers from Thatcher Demko, 42 wins, 7 shots, a 926 and a 233. If we don't win a Stanley Cup this season, then it's rigged. Plain and simple. Last season, I wasn't worried about the first round, the second round, or the conference finals. I was looking right at the Stanley Cup final and which team in the East we were going to be taking on. This time around, we're taking a different approach. We're going game by game, and we have the Winnipeg Jets in the first round, so let's focus on this matchup first. There's no way that this is actually happening right now. We were the best team in the entire league, and we were by far the best defensive team in the entire league we didn't score and we couldn't keep the puck out of our own net how does that even happen like seriously we lost in five games to the winnipeg jets we allowed six goals here one goal here i mean a 1-0 loss i'll take it it's the way she goes allowed four goals here and allowed three goals here during the regular season we only allowed on average 2.3 in game five elimination we allowed six i can't believe that just happened this is the second year in a row now where we've lost to the Western Conference champions and then they lose in the Stanley Cup final. But this time it's the Winnipeg Jets losing to the Pittsburgh Penguins of all teams. The fact that Pittsburgh is still competing for Stanley Cups at this point, I have no clue how that works. But you know what? I guess it does and there they are winning a Stanley Cup. But no, seriously, I can't get over the fact that we just lost in the first round in five games. What happened here? JT Miller didn't score a single goal. Bro scored 42 goals in the first 62 games of the season. And then after that, couldn't find the back of the net to save his life. I don't even know how that works. Meanwhile, Thatcher Demko, a 909 and a 295, those numbers aren't even that bad. We just didn't score. I'm beyond disappointed. So as we know, I don't have a ton of picks in the draft, and I really wasn't expecting to get anything good here. But with the 28th overall selection, we're going to be getting a medium leap potential goaltender in the first round. This dude's going to turn into a beast. I can guarantee it right now. Then again, he is a 58 overall. We selected a 58 overall in the first round. Maybe he won't be a beast. So once again, we didn't really have that many picks in the draft, but I will take a medium leap potential goaltender in the first round. That's going to be a massive pickup for us. So I gave up some small extensions here nothing crazy but we are going to be letting kevin hayes and oscar sunquist walk because i mean 34 years old and 32 years old they're not going to be getting any better and they're definitely going to be declining pretty quick here well kevin hayes has already started to decline so i mean i don't know what he's going to look like next season now here's where things are about to start getting interesting we got to give out some extensions quinn hughes we're going to be starting with you i don't even know what you're going to be asking for you're being traded i am trading you one year 16.7 million if we did an eight year deal with this man he wants 20 million dollars quinn hughes you're being traded straight up i'm not doing this i'm not playing this game here barrett hayton i also might be trading you i'm not doing a one-year deal at eight million dollars and then if we do eight years it's 12 million that's not happening either yanni gord we're gonna hold on to you for this season then we'll let you walk matt wall we're probably gonna trade you we actually might keep you around haven't decided on that mason appleton we're gonna write out your contract and then this man right here what are you gonna ask for are you gonna be reasonable this deal isn't necessarily the worst in the world because he's gonna continue to develop but he also hasn't shown any signs of developing yet He's a 79 overall at 20 years old. Why does nobody want to return to this team? Like nobody wants to play for us. So this is the decision we have to make. How valuable is Quinn Hughes to our team right now? He's a 94 overall, one of the best defensemen in the game. Kale McCarr, your salary does not look right to me. Are you really getting paid 8.4 million right now? Is Kale McCarr actually getting paid 8.4 million dollars? That does not sound right to me. So Kale McCarr, your current contract is paying you $9 million till the 2026-2027 season. That's what we are in right now. Why you are being paid 8 
28.4 million dollars i couldn't tell you quinn hughes i actually don't think this contract is right either now that i'm looking at it 7.7 .7 just doesn't seem right for him but you know what we're not going to worry about it he has the second highest trade value I think we're going to trade you because I don't want to give you $20 million. That's just absurd. Now, if we were to trade you to Colorado and pick up Devon Taves for $5.6 million, that could be a move. Also, five years at $5.6 million is not even right either. Are all the contracts just incorrect? I just realized that. None of these are right. Also, Devon Taves is 32, so I probably wouldn't make that move. But you know what? A deal for like Rasmus Dahlin... 11 million for the next six years that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world because he has 26 he's going to continue to get better he's got superstar x factors that could be the move right there okay so i'm cooking a deal up and i think i know what we're doing here quinn hughes casey Millsat, and a sixth round pick over to the buffalo sabers we're picking up rasmus dalene he's going to be a good replacement not quite as good as quinn hughes but he's a 92 overall he's got high elite potential superstar x factors he's going to be an absolute beast in this deal we're also going to be picking up zach benson he's a 90 overall he's going to be playing some second line minutes for us i think this has the potential to be an absolutely massive deal for us and i think this could be the move that's going to take us over the edge so i'm going to offer this over to buffalo they're saying no i guess we got to throw a seventh rounder in the deal a seventh rounder is really going to be the difference maker a sixth and a seventh and just like that the deal's done we gave up a lot there we gave up one of the best defensemen in the entire game actually the second best according to trade value but you know what it had to happen quinn hughes just wasn't being reasonable with us now zach benson what's your contract situation going to be looking like are you going to want to sign a reasonable deal here i can work with this this. You want 10.2 million? I can probably get you for nine. So here you go, Zach Benson. For the next six years, we're going to be locking you down. Actually, I want to do eight years. I want to make sure you're around for the rest of this rebuild. So with that being said, we're going to go from the nine million I was going to offer you to 9.75, and you're going to be sticking around on this team. When it comes to the rest of these contracts, we're going to wait it out here. Barrett Hayden, I would love to bring you back, but I'm not doing a one-year deal. I want to bring back this young defenseman here, but I'm not giving them $5 million. I'll give you like $4 million or something, but man, you're a 79 overall at 20 years old. You haven't shown any signs of developing and you want this type of money it's not happening now this deal right here might not make any sense whatsoever mario ferraro 3.5 for the next three years i'm giving him more than what he's asking for because i want to make sure he comes to the team but why am i making this deal you might ask he fits on every single defensive pairing we're going to throw him on the third pairing he's going to make that even better this is a good deal the logic behind this deal makes sense whether or not it's actually going to turn out that way we're yet to see. So I simulate to the beginning of next season. And it looks like Barrett Hayton's finally looking to be a bit more reasonable with us. We're going to do 7.2 for the next six seasons after this one. That's going to keep him around for the rest of the rebuild. And he's going to be playing some big second line minutes for us. Now, when it comes to our medium elite potential defenseman who's developed into an 81 overall, there's a good chance this man gets traded before the beginning of next season. Not only is he not developed whatsoever, but he still wants $5 million. I'm not giving an 81 overall $5 million when he's developed two overalls after giving him two full years of NHL experience. That's just plain stupid. So I think it's safe to say that our forward core is definitely the best in the entire league here. Pedersen, JT Miller, and Kuzmenko on the first line with a plus five for line chemistry. And then you're going to have Brock Besser, Barrett Hayden, and Zach Benson on the second line. This top six is going to be unstoppable. And the bottom six, it's pretty strong too. We're getting a plus two for line chemistry on this third line here. And the fourth line, these three guys can hold it down for sure. When it comes to our defense, I have so many questions. Dolene and Hironik, y'all just keep holding it down. You've been absolutely incredible. Matias here? Bro, just develop. And if you're not going to develop, let me know and I'll trade you away. JJ Moser, I can't complain with what you've done, but Mario Ferraro, you said you had a fit on every single defensive pairing. I don't necessarily call this a fit on every defensive pairing. Your third line isn't that great. The second line's pretty good and so is the first line. But I mean, your third pairing defensive fit, it's not even that good. But with Matt Watt, your side, I mean, it's not too bad. You're not losing anything for line chemistry, so I guess I'll take it. Meanwhile, we have the best goaltender in the entire league in between the pipes for us, Thatcher Demko. The way I'm talking about Thatcher Demko, you would think I'm a massive Vancouver Canucks fan because I'm just gassing this man up. But hey, he deserves it. He's going to at least to a Stanley Cup this season, and this is the beginning of our dynasty. I guess you could make the argument that technically last season was the beginning of our dynasty, but we just completely folded in the postseason and lost in the first round. And shout out to Barrett Hayton because he signed an extension with the team. You'll love to see it, you really do. So we're at the trade deadline, and it should be no surprise that this team continues to be a dominant force. We're first in the entire league with a 46-16-2 record. Our goal is four per game is absolutely incredible, 3.67. I actually think that might have taken a slight step back, but we don't have to worry about it because we have the best defense in the entire league. The forward core is led by some usual suspects here. Elias Pedersen, he's got 68 points. JT Miller, 66. Kuzmenko, 61. And the newly acquired Zach Benson, he's got 53 points in his first camp 
campaign with us. Also, same with Rasmus Dahlin, 44 points. I got to give a shout out to him. And you know who else I got a shout out? Of course, Thatcher Demko, 36 wins so far, five shots, a 921 to 240. Keep holding it down like usual. So right now, the team really doesn't need any upgrades, but we might as well make one. So we're going to acquire Cody Glass from the Nashville Predators here. He's an 85 overall. He'll be a nice upgrade to the bottom six here. And I think that might be enough to push us over the edge and finally help us win a Stanley Cup. So I'm saying this deal over to Nashville and we're getting it done. So that trade should work out pretty well for us. We're going to have Cody Glass, Hogwinner, and Pekulzin on the third line. They're getting a plus two overall boost. And then Yanni Gordon, Mason Appleton, and Pius Suter are going to be holding it down the fourth line. They're getting themselves a plus one overall boost. If this isn't enough for us to win a Stanley Cup, then I don't know what will be. So the Vancouver Canucks just keep on getting better. First in the entire league once again, but we're a 60 win team this time around, 60, 20, and two. The offense is flying, 3.7 goals per game, while the defense still incredible as well, 2.48. This is our year. If we don't win a Stanley Cup this season, then it's rigged. I'm pretty sure I said that at the beginning of the playoffs last season. But now I really mean it. JT Miller, 88 points. Pedersen, 87. Kuzmenko, 82. Hayton's got 76. This team's incredible from top to bottom. On top of that, we have the best goaltender in the entire league. I'm going to keep on gassing up Thatcher Demko. At this point, it's just become glazing. I am glazing this man. That's a bit of a pause right there, but we're going to move on from it. 48 wins, 5 shots, a 921, a 238. His best numbers yet, I think. I don't think he's posted a 238. I can't remember what his numbers were last season. They were 233. So slightly worse than last season, but he actually had more wins this time around. Lockdown in the postseason. I need this team to show up for 16 wins. We're playing the Arizona Coyotes in the first round. For some reason, I just have a feeling we're going to choke this. I don't know why, but the second I saw that Arizona Coyotes logo, I completely lost all faith in this team. I don't know what it is about the Arizona Coyotes. I just don't think we can beat this team. And the one thing I have to mention, they only won 39 games during the regular season. If we're going to lose against any team in the playoffs, it's going to be the 39 win Arizona Coyotes. I'm calling it right now. It's honestly just jokes at this point. We won game one, six to three. And now we're down 3-1 in the series. We lost in five games again. This is the second year in a row we've lost in the first round. And you can't say, oh, it's because the Vancouver Canucks aren't a good enough team. We won 60 games this season, one of the best offenses and by far the best defense. Last season, best defense in the entire league, one of the best offenses. But for some reason, this team just can't show up when it matters most. We really lost in five games after winning game one. We lost four straight games. If we lost in seven games, you know what? I wouldn't be complaining as much as I am right now. But bro, in five games after losing four straight, ain't no way that just happened. There's no way that actually happened. I really wasted assets trained for Cody Glass. This man had six points. He was our leading scorer in the postseason. No way I traded for Cody Glass. This man showed up and was our best player in the postseason. Meanwhile, everyone else forgot to show up. Pedersen, two points. This man had two points. JT Miller, two points. Bro, this didn't happen. Kuzmenko, two points. Did certain players just not show up here? I mean, this defenseman's getting traded. He's an 82 overall. Bro, I'm packing you up. You're done. You just played your last game in a Vancouver Canucks jersey. I'm so sick and tired of this man right here. I don't care if the second after I trade him, he develops into an 87 overall player. I have just given up with him. You have shown no signs of developing. I mean, in saying that, he also has jumped up to an 82 overall. But you know what? I've lost complete faith in him. He's not going to be a top player for us. Thatcher, Demko, a 903 and a 325. Do I need to trade you? I don't think I should have to trade you. Also to the people, because I know there will be people commenting this down below. Oh, you need a goaltender that has really good poise to perform in the playoffs. That's the reason you lose in the playoffs all the time. Your goaltender doesn't have good poise. His poise is a 90. I guarantee this man has one of the best poise in the entire game. Who won the Stanley Cup? That's what I need to know. Gustafson. Okay, what was Gustafson's poise? An 86. Okay, the second was Kochekov, 85. Gibson, 85. Sorokin, 90. Okay, so poise to me means absolutely nothing. It really just doesn't make sense anymore. So I think this is the guy we're going to be going with with our first draft pick. We're going with Sergei Varlamov. He's a gem. He's probably going to have low lead potential. He better have low lead potential. Yeah, this dude's going to be a stud for us in the future. So we're going to keep him around for sure. 
I say that also knowing there's like a 90% chance that this man's going to get traded in the next year or two because we're going all in here. We got to win ourselves the Stanley Cup. Barnes is also going to be our next draft pick here. There's a good chance he has medium elite potential. There we go. We just got ourselves a medium elite potential defenseman. He could replace the medium elite potential defense we have right now, but I'm actually not going to be doing that because he's a 51 overall. That would make literally zero sense. But yeah, we got to go all in here. We got to win ourselves the Stanley Cup. We could draft one of these goaltenders here. I guess it doesn't really matter which one we draft go with this one he's projected 110th overall there we go we got ourselves a medium elite potential goaltender so far this draft has been going very well for us and i think with our next selection we're going to select another medium elite potential goaltender because the medium elite potential goaltenders have trade value here semi-accurate scouting that's good enough for me are we going to get another medium elite potential goaltender yes we are i've been yapping a lot in this video but you know what it's productive yapping there's two different types of yapping there's just random yapping where you get 70 potential players but there's also yapping when you get medium elite potential goaltenders safe to say this draft was a massive of success for us we got a ton of great players not gonna lie this is actually a bit annoying here i would love to bring back cody glass he only wants three million dollars but we don't have the cap space for him so cody glass is leaving yanni gord's gonna leave matt waugh is gonna leave we're gonna qualify this guy right here and he's immediately getting traded i'm getting rid of this man mason appleton's also gonna be gone this elias Pettersson will hold on to we'll also hold on to this guy right here and then we'll sign some guys and make a couple moves here. I really don't know what we're going to do because our team should be good enough to win. I don't know why we're not good enough to win right now though, but we really should be. So I think this is going to be the trade and we're doing it with the Philadelphia Flyers. Kuzmenko straight up for Seidenberg here. He's a 19 year old, 83 overall. He's got a couple X factors right now. This man's going to develop into something special and he's going to do it on the Vancouver Canucks. I'm offering this one for one. They're saying no, but we just have to throw a seventh round pick in the deal. By making this move, not only are we clearing up cap space for this season, next season, and the year after, but we're also going to be able to bring back our own medium league potential defenseman because we just cleared up 4 million by making this trade. So we have a bunch of money freed up and now it's time to bring back Matias. We're going to do six years at 4.5 million dollars all you have to do is develop develop into a good defenseman for us and we're perfectly fine also add to rat i'll give you an extension while we're at it we'll do three years we'll do a one-way contract because i can get you fairly cheap six years at 900k that works for me they'll play some bottom six minutes for us that's a fantastic contract even if you don't develop into anything special i can work with that that's also a very tradable contract so i mean if you dropped like a 75 overall for some reason we can easily trade you so basically the entire core is going to be sticking around here but we do have to make a couple upgrades to the defense and josh mahura supposedly he can play on our third pairing who knows though because mario ferraro can't play on the third pairing so maybe josh mahura can who really knows we gave them two third round picks for him now when it comes to the rest of the team basically we're just gonna be rocking the exact same thing we had last season because we were a 60 win team why change anything up when you're a 60 win team so we were a 60 win team last season and we basically kept the entire core around it's gonna be elias patterson jt miller zach benson barrett hayden brock besser and our new addition seidenberg to the first line both of these are getting plus five for line chemistry the third line's looking great but cole's an add to rad to and hoglander hoglander's an 86 overall that was a great signing for us he developed into a stud and the fourth line that might be a bit weak here but you know what we can definitely work with it now defensively i can't complain with what we have here dolene Horonic, jj moser matias mario ferraro and then josh mahura josh mahura actually could play on the second line and then we get a plus one for line chemistry but you know what we're gonna rock with jj moser and matias they've been an absolutely deadly combination together so we're just gonna keep them together and not screw anything up now Thatcher Demko, I have absolutely no concerns about you. You've proved that you can be the best goaltender in the league. You've proved that you can carry this team to a 60 win season, but can you win this team a Stanley Cup? Because that's a question that has not been answered yet. Okay, so we have to have a conversation. Vancouver's first in the entire league, 42, 19, and two. I have no problem with that. And I definitely don't have a problem with our offense being the best in the entire league, but we really didn't lose that many players over the off season. So explain to me how we have a goals allowed of 3.11. What changed? Was Matt Wall really that crucial? crucial to our team i mean the top six here continues to do exactly what we expect them to do absolutely dominate and same with the first defensive pairing the rest of the team however not necessarily the greatest like add two ratus minus one the fact that we have anyone on this team with a negative plus minus is absolutely disappointing and then when it comes to goaltending numbers that's your damn yep no i didn't see those i did not see those i believe you had a 930 and a 220 i didn't see those numbers i actually ignored what those numbers said we have to trade for a defenseman though shay theodore are you gonna be our guy 
side? Probably not because I don't want to give you $13 million. We have to find a cheap defenseman that can help save this team. Okay, so I think we have to face facts. We're not going to win a Stanley Cup with Matias on the team. This man has not shown any signs of being a top defenseman for us. So with that being said, we're going to trade him away. We're going to bring in an old Adam Pellick. He plays defense. He's an 88 overall and he can play on the second pairing for us. I think he can be a difference maker. Can we go one for one here? They're going to be saying no, but you know what? We're going to find a way to get this deal done. So here we go. A couple prospects along with a fourth round pick over to the New York Islanders. They're still saying no to that. Let's throw in a medium elite potential goaltender. Although they don't want a medium elite potential goaltender, he's got a lot of trade value and that should be enough to get this deal done. I am very surprised that we can't get this deal done. I have no clue why I've been acting like we don't have a first round pick we can work with. So a first rounder in 2029, along with a fourth rounder for Adam Pellick. We also have Matias in this deal, like I said. There we go. We're getting it done. This should be enough to win us a Stanley Cup. The defense is upgraded. The offense is already incredible. I don't know what else we could do to make this team better. At this point, I think we have to face facts. We're going all in. So a medium elite potential goaltender for Alex Texier. We'll make one addition to the bottom six here. That should be a nice improvement for us. We're winning a Stanley Cup this season. I'm calling it right now. Then again, I've said that every single year this rebuild, except for the first season. And what has happened ever since then? complete and utter disappointment. So what we're doing with the moves we made is Texier is going to be playing on the fourth line. He doesn't necessarily have the greatest line fit in the world, but he definitely can't make our forward core any worse. While defensively, Adam Pell is going to be playing with JJ Moser. They're getting a plus one for line chemistry. Hopefully that move is going to be enough to put us over the edge and then we can finally allow this team to hoist a Stanley Cup. So I don't care what our record is anymore. 57, 22, and three. We have an amazing offense. We have a fantastic defense. We already know these things. We already know Zach Benson's leading the way with 90 points. We already know Barrett Hayton had 89 points, including 41 goals. JT Miller, Elias Patterson, they've been incredible. Brock Besser, Rasmus Dahlin, I can't complain with the production from anyone on this team. Goaltending wise, Thatcher Demko, 44 wins, 4 shots, a 905 and a 297. We're going to pretend these numbers don't exist. We're moving on to the playoffs. We have the Edmonton Oilers in the first round, but the worst part about this matchup right here, Edmonton won 39 games during the regular season. Do you remember what happened last time a team won 39 games in the regular season? We just have to pray that McDavid doesn't go stupid mode on us and we're able to get past the first round because I don't think I could take another five game exit in the first round. So here we go with the first round of the playoffs. Whatever you do, do not lose in five games. Okay, we lost game one, but we're taking game two. We're taking game three as well. The series is tied two to two. Game five is going to be a massive one. Do not lose this game. That's a massive overtime win for us. Let's close this series out in game six. We can't go to game seven. There we go. The Vancouver Canucks have won and we're off to the second round a place that we haven't been in a handful of years the fact that i'm saying that makes absolutely no sense because we should have been here many times also i just realized we beat pittsburgh 11 to 3 here yeah we dominated that team so the vancouver canucks found a way to get past the edmonton oilers in the first round but last time we were in the second round things didn't really go our way but this is a completely different vancouver canucks team so we're going to get a completely different result and when i say we get a completely different result i don't mean we get swept instead of losing in seven games i mean we win the series don't want to get that mixed up similar to the oilers series we're going back and forth with calgary the entire way we're winning game five that's a massive one for us demko's picking up the shutout and we're going to close this one out in game six and we're off to to the conference finals for the first time and it would be a very long time i was gonna say in like five years and like 10 years but no i think the last time this team was in the conference finals would have been 2013 or 2010 last time they were in the stanley cup final we're in the year 2028 now so it's been almost 20 years so it was 2011 the last time the vancouver canucks were in the conference finals i just double checked that but we're taking on the vegas golden knights here what vancouver did in 2011 doesn't matter right now what matters is what they can do in 2028 so after getting absolutely dominated in game number one like i mean they kicked the crap out of us seven to one we've won three straight games and we're about to close it out right here in game five and just like that we're off to the stanley cup final so it could have been quinn hughes versus jack and luke but unfortunately quinn was unreasonable so we had to trade him away but that doesn't really change anything because the Vancouver Canucks are still going to be matching up against the New Jersey Devils in the Stanley Cup final now all we gotta do is pray that this doesn't turn out like 2011 I don't think I could deal with that disappointment right now so I'm not going to mess around at all here we're just going to simulate the entire series and watch the Vancouver Canucks hoist the Stanley Cup and things are looking absolutely fantastic a quick five game series and just like that the Vancouver Canucks have won their first Stanley Cup in franchise history but that's the first of many we've got the entire core coming 
coming back next season, we're going to win another. So I think the biggest difference this time in the postseason was our big time players actually showed up to play. Pedersen, 22. JT Miller, 21. Zach Benson, 18. Seidenberg, he's picking up 18 points. While Thatcher Demko, a 935 and a goals against of a 205. Yeah, when your big time players are making big time plays like this, it's real easy to win Stanley Cups. Now, so far, the draft's been pretty decent for us. We got a medium top six potential forward. Then we got a top four potential defenseman. But we're going to top all that with this low lead potential defenseman selected 160th overall. So outside that low lead potential player, there wasn't anything really crazy in the draft. I'll select this guy with the 224th overall. He's going to be the Mr. Irrelevant for this draft. He has bottom six potential. Not overly surprised with that. We got one decent player out of the five we selected, so I guess I'll take it. So when it comes to the re-sign phase, we don't have a lot of money to work with, but I do want to bring back Pius Suter on a 2 by 2 He's been a really important piece to the team, so we better keep him around here. Meanwhile, Alex Texier, I'm going to let you walk. So after going through the re-sign phase, we do have some extensions to give out for next season and beyond. So we're going to start with Adam Pellick here. We're doing two years at $6.5 I think he was a crucial piece to us winning that Stanley Cup, so we better keep him here. And I think outside of Adam Pellick, we're going to let JJ Moser, Mahura, and Ferraro walk. The only reason I'm saying that is because these guys want a lot of money. JJ Moser, yeah, he's an 83 overall, 28 years old, but he's not worth 5.5 million. Josh Mahura, this man wants 5.1 million and 82. The only guy being reasonable here is Ferraro, but I really don't care too much about keeping him around. So more than likely, I think we're gonna ride their contracts out, and then next season we'll make a couple moves to bring in some new defensemen. Now this isn't necessarily a move I want to make, but it's a move that we need to make. JJ Moser over to the Vegas School of Knights for a Korzak and a third round pick. We gotta clear up some money in order to help the forward core a bit. And the reason I said that last move is gonna be helping our forward core although we did acquire a defenseman we freed up a bunch of cap space and that's going to allow us to bring in alex newhook on a two-year deal at 3.1 million so those are going to be the only major moves before we head into next season because we basically have our entire team here and i don't really want to mess that up we were stanley cup champions why would we get rid of a ton of players let's run it back with the same core i actually think we might be a bit better this season i guess we'll find out when we take a quick overview of the team there's a very good chance we win another Stanley Cup. Pedersen, Miller, Seidenberg on the top line. Then you got Brock Besser, Barrett Hayden, and Zach Benson on the second line. The third line's looking even better this season. I didn't think that would be possible. 87 overall Hoglander, 83 overall Atu Ratu, and then 85 overall Pacols, and he's starting to develop now. While the fourth line might be a bit weak, we got Alex Newhook here. He's going to help hold it down. He's giving this line a plus one boost. Now defensively, this team continues to look incredibly strong. Dalina and Hironik are going to hold it down the top pairing, but the second pairing is where things really change. The reason we traded JJ Moser away is so we can allow Maher to play on that second pairing with Pelic, and they're going to get a plus two overall boost. Well, the third pairing, I definitely can't complain about what we have here. Meanwhile, of course, we already know this man's in between the pipes, and we already know who the backup is. Thatcher Demko, 87 overall. He's already got one Stanley Cup, and he's looking to hoist a second. Now, if I were to make a prediction for this season, we won 57 games last season, or a round there and then we won 60 the year before i think our team right now is better than our team has been the past two seasons we might be a 65 win team you just never know with the way things have been going and the success this team's had during the regular season, 65 wins is definitely possible for this team. Right now, I'm just disappointed with the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, we're first in the entire league. Yeah, we have 41 wins right now, only 19 losses and 2 OT losses. The offense right now is great, 3.76, while the defense not too bad, 3.05. But we are not on pace for 65 wins, not even close. It's not even possible for us to win 65 games this season. What's going on with this team? We should be better than this. I mean, I'm really complaining about us being first in the entire league right now but i mean look at the team we have here we should definitely have at least 50 wins at this point zach benson 71 jt miller 68 pedersen 61 barrett hayton 61 seedenberg he's got 59 we almost have five players over a point a game right now almost i said i mean like seedenberg's three short barrett hayton's one short and then pedersen's also one short but the offense on this team absolutely incredible while the goaltending numbers maybe thatcher demko isn't that guy anymore a save percentage of 900 with a 305 goals against? Demko, what's going on with you, my guy? Your numbers are usually way better than this. But we have to remember, when we won a Stanley Cup last season, these were his numbers. So are we on pace for another Stanley Cup run? We might be. But if we are going to win a Stanley Cup, we definitely have to make one move at the trade deadline here. And I'm not necessarily sure on what that move is going to be. This deal is just going to be a massive risk. A third rounder straight up for Anthony Duclair. This is a massive risk for two reasons. One, I'm not even sure if Anthony Duclair is going to be able to join this team. Like, I don't even think we're going to have the cap space for him. Number two, I don't even know if he can fit on our bottom six. He can maybe fit on our second line, but we don't need him to play on the second line. We need him for the bottom six. 
So I'm making this deal and now we're just going to pray that we can somehow make contracts work. When I make deals like that, sometimes you got to be wondering what is stick on the ice cooking because I'm making a deal and have absolutely no clue whether or not it's going to work out for us. Like I just trade for Anthony Duclair. I gave up a second round pick and it's going to be a decent second round pick. Actually, that's a lie. It's going to be like 60th overall. But even still, but I just trade for a guy who we're not even 100% sure is going to be able to play on the team. Now, Duclair's fit on the fourth line here. It could definitely be a lot worse, but it also could be way better. But it doesn't matter. He's going to be playing alongside Pius Suter and Alex Newhook. Newhook's going to be the playmaker for Duclair. I don't really care what you do in the final 20 games here. You're a nice addition to the team. We replaced a 78 overall with an 84 Duclair. I can't really complain about that. That's definitely an upgrade for our team. No surprise that are going to be seen this season as once again, the Vancouver Canucks are first in the entire league with a 54, 25, and 3 record record but considering what expectations were at the start of the season it was a massive disappointment for us the offense was flying while the defense was actually pretty mid i'm not really going to celebrate 3.1 allowed definitely not where we've been in the past and as we just saw the offense was flying and that's going to be led by jt miller who's got 98 points here patterson's got 87 zach benson what a great pickup he was he's got 86 and seidenberg 77 points including 36 goals this man's an absolutely elite talent the only unfortunate thing is he's going to be wanting a bag in a couple seasons where are we going to find money to pay him? Haven't thought that far ahead yet. Okay, I don't care that we were first in the entire league, an 898 and a 313. Thatcher Demko is washed. I hate to say it, but it just has to be said. He is not that man anymore. I don't think we can win with Thatcher Demko in between the pipes. But you know what? I want him to prove me wrong. Everyone is betting against Thatcher Demko. They say he is not that man anymore. They're like, Thatcher Demko, he might have won a Stanley Cup last season, but he's washed. He's not that guy anymore. He's about to prove everyone wrong, and we're going to start with the LA Kings in the the first round it would be a really bad look if i hyped thatcher demko up like that and then we got swept in the first round and he had a goals against a five now that i've gassed him up a little bit he better perform so we'll simulate the first four games here and thatcher demko you better stand on your head oh my god things are not looking good we won game three but we lost game four we're about to lose this series in five games once again okay we bounced back in game five game six is massive can we stay alive here we got to win this one all right, we've won back-to-back -back games. We were down 3-1 in the series, but it's tied 3-3. We're off to game seven. Demko, you were absolutely horrible in those first four games, but we're in game seven now, so I don't care what you did in the first four. All I care about is what you do right now. So lock in, never mind. We lost no team. I really wanted to say Marchenko, but it's Mischenko. I don't really care what this dude's name is. All I know is we lost in the first round once again after finishing first in the entire league. That is an absolute shame. Like imagine a world in which the Vancouver Canucks aren't a complete disappointment. Appointment. Like we finished first in the entire league for four straight seasons now. We've won one Stanley Cup, so I'm not going to complain about the Stanley Cup run we went on last season. But we've lost in the first round in the other three postseason appearances. Like if we lose in the second round, okay, at least we got through the first round. Or if we lose in the conference finals, way she goes. But the first round in three of the last four seasons, when we've been the best team in the entire league, that doesn't sit right with me. So here are the fantastic offensive numbers we put up. Did anyone actually have a bad plus minus? Ferrara was minus one, but outside of him, nobody was actually that bad when it came to plus minus. Goaltending numbers though? Okay, Thatcher Demko, I'm sorry to say, but we have to trade you away. An 878 and a 354? You're not that guy anymore. You're officially washed. The time has come for us to trade you. I was hyping you up this entire rebuild so far. You might think I'm the biggest Thatcher Demko fan in the world, but I'm not. But the way I've been gassing this man up, you would think I am. Demko, I gotta stop glazing you. Way she goes, but you gotta get traded. I can't have this ever happen again. Also, in case you were wondering, Colorado beat Tampa in the Stanley Cup final in six games, but we really don't care about that. We gotta work on our team. So in the draft, things weren't looking too good, and I was thinking we were gonna get any good prospects here, but with the 188th overall selection, we're gonna be securing Nugent Hopkins, a lowly potential power forward. And it turns out that the 188th overall selection ended up being our last pick in the draft, so I guess that saves this draft from being an absolute wash. I also do want to point out we got Van Riemsdyk, Ward, Reeves, and Nugent Hopkins. So shout out to those legends. And yes, I just called Ryan Reeves a legend. So we're going to have a lot of turnover this season. Duclair is gone. Granted, he was only here for like 20 games. Mario Ferraro is going to be leaving. Josh Maher is going to be leaving. But what makes it even more concerning, it's time for us to pay this man right here. He's going to want at least $11 million. JT Miller, he's going to want a bag as well. So what is the cap management going to be looking like next season? I have no clue. We also have to pay Brock Besser. Okay, this this is going to be tough. We're definitely going to struggle to stay under the cap for sure. So I can tell you right now, Seidenberg is going to absolutely screw us. He doesn't want an extension. 
I'm guessing $15 million. Okay, that's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Normally when they say they don't want an extension, they just say an absurd amount of money. We could probably make this work. So with Seidenberg, we'll do 10.5 million for the next five seasons, and that will allow us to keep him on the team. And then we'll have $14 million to work with for the rest of the players. Ideally, JT Miller here, he asked for less than what his current contract is, but he wants more. I'm not willing to do more. Brock Besser, what are you looking at for an extension? $10 million. I'm not willing to do $10 million either. So that means both of you guys are being traded. An extension like this, however, I'll definitely do. 2.5 for the next two years. You play good third line minutes, so I'm happy to keep you around. So I got a plan. What are the odds this plan works out? Very, 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 very low, like less than 1%. Brock Besser is going over to the Columbus Blue Jackets. We're picking up Erickson, who's a 79 overall with medium lead potential. We're going to hope he develops incredibly quick. I'm going to send this over. They're saying no. It probably isn't going to take too much more to get this deal done. I'll throw a third rounder in the deal, maybe even a fourth. I think that actually might be enough to get this one done. All right, we got this deal done. Now we're going to figure out how much Erickson wants for a contract for next season. Ideally, because he's only a 79 overall, we can get him fairly cheap. If he wants like $7 million, we're going to be absolutely screwed here. But I'm going to bank on this man right here wanting like $4 million. And he's looking for 2.6. All right, what if we do a long-term deal? Eight years, he wants 6.9 million. We're only going to need him for the next three after this one. No, it's next two after this one three what year are we in so we've completed six seasons that means we need him for the next four we have him under contract for this season and then we need him for three years after that so a three-year extension will be enough to get this done so we'll do 3.5 for the next three years and then that's going to lock down erickson once again we're just going to hope he develops incredibly quick Okay, so similar to Brock Besser, we're not going to be bringing back JT Miller, so I might as well get something for him. So I'm going to package him up along with the first round pick for 2030, and we're going to try to pick up Tiga Ginla from the Arizona Coyotes. They're going to be saying no here. I'm not necessarily surprised. Let's throw in a second rounder, and that should be more than enough to get this deal done. I don't want to mess around with third and fourth round picks. A first, a second, JT Miller, and just like that, we got Tiga Ginla. Okay, I genuinely thought that would be enough. I guess we're going to have to give him a fourth rounder as well, maybe a fifth or something. We don't actually have a fourth rounder, so hopefully this fifth is enough to get the deal done. I'll send that over. We got Tiga Ginla. Now we got to hope he's reasonable with his contract extension. So when it comes to contract extensions, what's Tiga Ginla going to be looking for? I can't even give him one. That's fantastic. All right, but we have him for this season. That's all that matters. New hook still around. We have the core here together. Now we have some money to work with. So let's give out some stupid deals. So when I said stupid deals, I mean something like this. Peyton Krebs, 8.5 for next season. You want 7.1 on a three-year deal? I'll give you 8.5 for one year. Now I have absolutely no clue whether or not Henry Yokihara is going to fit on any of our lines here, but the dude's an absolute legend, so we have to bring him onto the team. New Mexico outlaw legend, never forget. And then the next man we're going to bring in to help our defense is going to be Val Mackey. We'll do one year at $4 million. That should be enough to bring him on for this one season, and then we should be good. Now I'll be the first guy to say it. This team's not as good. Pedersen, Krebs, and Seidenberg on the first line. Erickson, Hayton, and Benson on the second line. The bottom six here is still really good. Like, I can't complain about it, but we're just definitely not the powerhouse we used to be. Even the defensive core isn't as strong. Rasmus Dahlin, Hironik, I mean, they're holding it down the top pairing. Henry, Hoki, Haru, and Pelik, I can't really complain about the second pairing here. The third pairing is not bad by any means, but I just feel like this team isn't what they used to be. Then again, I might be holding on to the past. We actually might be a really good team right now. Thatcher Dem Demko though. This is the last dance. Every single sign last season pointed to last season being the last dance, but for some reason I have faith in you. I believe that you're somehow going to turn it around and be an absolute demigod this season. Do I have absolute blind faith in you? Absolutely. Am I an absolute nutcase for believing that you can somehow turn it around after having an 870 and a 350? Of course I am. But if there's one thing that Stick on the Ice does, is he makes right decisions. And this is clearly the right decision. At the beginning of the season, I was talking about how I don't think we're as good as we used to be. We're currently sitting with a 45-14-5 record. I know absolutely nothing about the Vancouver Canucks. Almost averaging 4 goals a game, 2.86, the best defense we've had in a handful of years now. Maybe Vancouver's back. Every single time I say something like Vancouver's back, I'm acting like this team completely disappeared. We've been the best team in the league for what, 5 straight years now? 4 straight. This would be the 5th straight year. 
yeah, we're pretty good. Also, Seidenberg, 44 goals, 81 points. That's pretty solid. Pedersen, he's got 72 points. Meanwhile, where's that young player we acquired that's playing on the second line? Erickson, 30 points. He's got 22 goals, 8 assists. I can't really complain with that. He's up to an 83 overall. He's going to continue to develop. He'll be a decent piece for us next season, that's for sure. But more importantly, I got to check out Thatcher Demko's numbers. 36 wins, 4 shots, a 905 and a 282. Honestly, it's actually probably good we kept him around this season because that's going to give Thornton a bit more time to develop. He's got medium elite potential and 83 overall if you were to ask me this is going to be our starter next season he's probably going to be taking over in between the pipes but until then let's let him ride as the backup goaltender let him get a bit of experience in between the pipes and then next season could be his year to take over now normally i would make a trade here at the trade deadline but i'm actually not feeling like making one the team's looking fantastic i can't complain with what we're doing i also think that thatcher demko is the fourth best goals against in the entire league so we really don't need to trade for a goaltender the defense is good the offense is absolutely flying Let's just simulate to the end of the season and then go win ourselves a Stanley Cup. Or lose in the first round, it's either or. So I don't need to tell y'all this, it's the same usual thing, the Vancouver Canucks finishing first in the entire league with a 56-19-7 record. One of the greatest teams of the past 10 years, and once again first in the entire league. Almost 4 goals per game, only allowing 2.87. I guess keeping Thatcher Demko around was the right decision. And you know what else was a good decision? Giving this man all the money he wanted. Seidenberg, 52 goals, 50 assists, our first 100 point player of the video and Pedersen he was only two points shy of 100 he's got 98 Zach Benson 78 and Peyton Krebs what a great pickup that was 85 points for us no this team's ready to win a Stanley Cup and when it comes to goaltending of course Thatcher Demko is the number one man here 44 wins four shots a 908 and a 279 I need one last run from you you've lost all your x factors give me one more postseason run get us one more Stanley Cup and then we'll call it a day with you and it all starts right here the first round matchup against the Winnipeg Jets whatever y'all do do not lose in the first round i cannot handle another first round exit it's gotten out of hand at this point we already know three of the last four post seasons definitely haven't ended in our favor but right now things are looking good we have a 2-1 series lead make that a 2-2 series we just blew it do not lose this game here okay we got a 3-2 series lead we're gonna close it out in game six here and we're moving on to the second round just like that a big 6-3 win and we're off so with that first round matchup in the books, I'm not worried about the Vancouver Canucks anymore. We've got past the first round and we're not losing after this. But now we have the Edmonton Oilers to take on. And I'm not really concerned about the Edmonton Oilers per se. I'm scared of Connor McDavid. I think Leon Dreisaitl left the team. But yeah, I'm scared of Connor McDavid and Connor McDavid only. Okay, so Connor McDavid's absolutely cooking us right now. We're down 3-1 in the series. Make that down 4-1 and we're eliminated in the second round. Connor McDavid absolutely dominated us right there. Zach Benson showed to you, you led the team 14 points in 11 games. But I gotta see what McDavid did. Because that man was locked in. Because there's no way we lose to Edmonton unless he's picking up 85 points. Okay. Okay, he had 15 points in 12 games. Fermentin was the next leading scorer with 11 points. We lost to a bunch of scrubs. I mean, Marcia Sos here, but he's 39 at this point. Chikorin, Bunting, Strom, Bouchard. This is a very mid team. This is an incredibly mid team. How did we lose to them? Who's in between the pipes for this team? I gotta know. It's gotta be Vasilevsky or something. Gabriel Degg, 85 overall. Okay, fair. Gorgiev was backing him up. We shouldn't have lost to this team, plain and simple. All right, it's time for a stick on the ice stick. Statement. We've heard these before and they've never backfired. Three years left, two Stanley Cups minimum. We're looking to win three in the next three. I doubt that's going to happen though. But you know what? Two in the next three, I can live with. So we're locking in. No more messing around. Shout to Colorado. They want a Stanley Cup, but it's not the Vancouver Canucks. That's all we care about. This team's about to make some big moves here. And it's probably going to start with a new goaltender. Now, I don't think it's really fair to throw Thatcher Demko under the bus for this playoff run because Rasmus Dahlin was minus 10. So clearly this team did not play well. His numbers aren't even that bad. A 905 and a 296. But let's face it. He's an 85 overall, 34 years old. He's lost all the X factors. He's not the same. Before we head anywhere though, we better give an extension here and it's going to be with Teague Aginla. We're going to do 4.8 for the next four years. He can hold it down the third line for us. Also, Henry Yoki Haru, I think I might keep you around. How much money do you want? Okay, maybe not for 3.1 million. Alex Newhook, what do you want for a deal? 2.8. I think we can get that done. Let's do 2.6 though. That's not a bad deal for you. You play great minutes on the fourth line. I want to keep you around. Valimaki, what about you? I'm just going through all the deals now. Valimaki, I'm not doing him. I don't know why I said all the deals. I meant all the contracts, all the players, whatever I want to call them. It just don't matter. Pi Suter, we're going to let you walk. Yeah, so I guess the only guys we're bringing back are New Hook and Teague Ginla. So we don't have ourselves a ton of picks in the upcoming draft, but we are going to get some good selections here. And that's going to start with the 92nd overall. We're securing a medium league potential goaltender. He's going to be a great trade asset for us. 
The solid drafting is going to continue here because with the 125th overall, we're going to be securing a medium elite potential power forward. However, selected right before that man was a medium elite potential goaltender. Probably would have preferred that. Okay, I was not expecting this draft to be as good as it has been. But hey, we're going to keep on bringing these elite potential players in. And we're selecting this one with the 156th overall. And to finish this draft off, I mean, I think it's only fitting we secure one more elite potential player. This is going to be a low elite potential sniper. And this is with the fifth last pick in the draft. We picked this man up with the 220th overall. How we secured an elite potential player with the 220th overall pick, I couldn't tell you. So out of the five selections we had in the draft here, we got four elite potential players. That's definitely a win if you ask me. So we're not really doing too much here. We're just signing a couple of rookies. I'm going to let Peyton Krebs, Henry Yokiharu, Val Mackey, and Pius Suter all walk. I mean, I'd love to bring back Peyton Krebs, but we just don't have the money for him. He wants $13 million. We have seven. So I could offer him this right here. And if he feels like accepting, then that's perfect. But highly doubt that's going to happen. Happen. yeah so he's basically telling us to screw off in the nicest way possible not overly surprised about that so we didn't really have to do anything during the re-sign phase but now we're in next season we got to give out some extensions but we're actually not giving out extensions i'm trading pelic bros dropped to an 83 overall he's 35 years old he's not going to be getting any better he's lost all of his x factors doesn't have any superstar ones either it's time to break down the defensive core break down the goaltending tandem we got to make some big moves here and we're going to start with an extension for thornton we'll do just under 1.6 million for the next two seasons Seasons, that's going to keep him around for the rest of the rebuild so we got to make a handful of moves here to make sure this team's ready for the next three years and i think this is going to be the first one lundquist for pelic a second and third rounder will be able to keep him around for the rest of the rebuild he's on a decent enough contract for an 84 overall and he's definitely not going to be dropping an overall so let's make this move never mind we have to add a bit more now i don't think it's necessarily going to take a lot more so i'll add a fifth rounder and i think that should be enough to be the difference maker I guess not. Maybe a fifth and sixth rounder. I'm basically giving up all of our draft picks for 2032. But you know what? If we can bring in Lundquist, then it's definitely going to be worth it. All of this for one man. There we go. We got the deal done. So the future's now. So I don't really care about draft picks or medium elite potential prospects that are developing. I care about a guy like Theo Lindstein. He's got two years left on his deal at 5.4 million. He's an 84 overall. We'll keep him for the next two years of the rebuild. And then we'll figure out something in year number three here. But we're also going to try to pick up a third and fourth rounder as well. Hey, I'll take that deal any day of the week. All I can say is it's an incredibly sad day. Thatcher Demko, you had some fantastic years with the Vancouver Canucks, bringing them their first Stanley Cup, but it's time for us to part ways. You're 34 years old and 85 overall. You're going to keep on declining, and that's just not going to work for us. So I'm making this deal with the Columbus Blue Jackets to free up some money. I don't know why they think they're getting an absolute steal here. You just picked up a declining Thatcher Demko. I mean, granted, I definitely could have got more in that deal, but hey, I got exactly what I needed, and that's cap space. So we're definitely going to need a backup goaltender for this season, and I already know who we're going with. The man, the myth, the legend, Jordan Bennington. We're going to do a two-year deal. That's a lot. We're doing one year, 2.3 million. We're going to give him some bread. Bring him on. He can be a good role model for our goaltender right now. He can teach him a thing or two about a thing or two. Yeah, Jordan Bennington's definitely going to be the man for us. He brings a bit of culture to the team with him. Before we get into the beginning of this season, we are going to make one more trade here. And that's picking up Huskins from the Philadelphia Flyers. He's an 82 overall that can play defense. So yeah, that's what we need. Welcome to the team. So a lot of changes happened during the offseason, but we're still looking like an incredible team. We're going to have a Ginlump, Pedersen, and Seidenberg on the first line, and they're going to be getting a plus four overall boost. On the second line, of course, we got Erickson here, but we also have Barrett Hayden and Zach Benson. They're going to hold it down like usual with a plus five boost. When it comes to the bottom six, we really don't have any weaknesses here. Hoglander, who's an 87 overall, has a ton of X factors. What a great contract that was. We're paying this man 3.1 million, and he's an 87 overall. If at some point we got to trade him, he's going to have a ton of trade value, but I highly doubt that's going to be happening. I want to keep him on the team that's for sure when it comes to the defense a lot of changes here but Rasmus Dahlin and Hronik are still going to be leading the way while the new additions of Lundqvist and Lidstein they're going to be holding it down that second pairing we have a pretty solid defensive core here and I think we can rock with this for the next three years and we definitely should be able to win a Stanley Cup with them the biggest questions coming in between the pipes for the Canucks is we don't have Thatcher Demko anymore is Thornton going to be our man for the next three years I mean he has to be but he's going to be able to lead us to a Stanley Cup that's the big question we have 22 years old he's already up to an 86 overall he's probably going to pick up a couple x factors by the end of the season but the one good thing is we have an elite goaltender backing him up. He might be 37 years old, but he can definitely win you a Stanley Cup. Jordan Bennington, what's your poise? 
it's only 80 but it doesn't matter if we need to put you in during the postseason i know for a fact you can carry us to a stanley cup because you've done it before well you haven't done it with the vancouver canucks you did with the st louis blues and obviously the st louis blues were a superior team at that point like i mean that entire lineup was perfect if we had jordan bennington the entire year we probably would have went 82 and 0 that's just facts right there now i honestly never thought i would see the day the Vancouver Canucks, fourth in the entire league, were officially washed. This team is no longer good. 39-23-2. I can't believe we've dropped from first in the entire league. 3.7 goals per game, that's pretty good. But our defense is mid. 3.13 allowed. We can't be allowing this to happen. We gotta smarten up here and we gotta start playing some better defense. But since the offense is flying, we might as well highlight a few guys here. And that's gonna be starting with Zach Benson, who's got 74 points. patterson has got 66. Erickson, 63 with 35 goals. With Barrett Hayden, he's also got 63. And in between the pipes, I really wanna know what Thornton's doing. Oh man, these numbers are cooked. 31 wins, 3 shouts, and 8 9 94 and a 320. We are not winning a Stanley Cup with these numbers. Thankfully, Jordan Bennington's been holding it down, but I mean, we already knew that was going to happen. Eight wins, two losses, a 903 and a 260. When the playoffs come around, we might have to throw Jordan Bennington in between the pipes because right now, things are not looking good. At least you have one X factor though, so there is that. All right, so who wants to hear some absolutely ridiculous stick on the ice logic? Obviously, our defense isn't the best right now, but our offense is pretty good. So how should we fix this problem? Make our offense even better. Let's score even more goals. So Cody Glass, welcome back to the team. I'm going to trade for you once again. But I also do want to point out you're on your third run with Nashville. You started with Nashville, then you went to Vancouver because we traded for you. And then you went back to Nashville, then you went to Dallas for a couple seasons. Now you're back in Nashville. So yeah, you're coming to Vancouver again. But then again, should I really trade for you? Because the last time you were in Vancouver, you weren't necessarily that great. Actually, when the postseason came around, weren't you our best performer? Let me double check that. We're bringing Cody Glass on to the team because big time players make big time plays and that's exactly what he does so cody glass welcome back to vancouver so hopefully our logic of outscoring the opponent can work out for us our defense is very mid it's definitely not one of the best in the entire league like it used to be but we're going to score a lot of goals here and i think that's going to be the difference maker so through making that trade we're going to be sending Atu ratu to the bench he's going to be a healthy scratch for us while cody glass is going to be taking that third line center role away from him i would love to have Atu ratu out here because i mean he's a great young player in 81 overall but i just don't think he actually fits here i mean he does fit here but you know what i'm saying we have cody glass that's definitely an upgrade over him so after the addition of cody glass the vancouver canucks are going to finish the season out strong here finishing third in the entire league with a 50 27 and 5 record our offense that's still looking fantastic 3.73 goals per game while the defense actually improved just above three goals allowed per game i can definitely work with that the face of the franchise and elias patterson is going to continue to lead the way here he's got 95 points 38 goals 57 assists well seidenberg an incredible season from him he's got 45 goals once again here but he's also got 88 points i also don't know why i just said once again because i don't even know if he's recorded 45 goals before i know he recorded 55 the other year maybe it was 50 all i know is he scored 50 goals once zach benson 86 points while erickson he's picking up 83 here and he's actually leading the goal scoring race here as he's got 47 when it comes to goaltending numbers i have absolutely no faith in thornton here i'm just going to keep it a stack 38 wins three shots and 896 and the goals against of just above three do we run with jordan bennington and i'm actually being 100 percent serious about this this man had a 12 and 3 record with a 906 and a 259 yes he didn't play nearly as much as thornton did but his numbers are also significantly better this is gonna be a tough decision decision to make and you guys aren't going to find that decision out until the end of the postseason because we're just going to rock with a goaltender here and you're going to see what happens and speaking of the postseason we might as well take a look at who our first matchup is going to be that's going to be the calgary flames honestly i'm not overly scared of the calgary flames but then in saying that i also would not be surprised if we got swept now that i made that comment so let's see what happens so i'm happy to say the vancouver canucks aren't going to be getting swept by the calgary flames here we're actually the team almost doing the sweeping we got to simulate game five to finish this one up and we're taking the flames down a quick five game series so I'm not really sure if we should thank the Anaheim Ducks or the Edmonton Oilers. The Anaheim Ducks were the clear favorite. I think they finished first in the entire league. Edmonton's going to complete a massive upset, taking them down in seven games. However, the only issue is, now we have to play Connor McDavid in the second round. And that man can single-handedly win you a series. So far, it's been a pretty close series, with us splitting the series so far 2-2. Two to two. Now, Game 5 is going to be a massive one. we got to come out on top here, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're winning that one 5-1. to one. So we're going to close the series out in Game 6 here, and we're off to the Conference Finals. So we've reached the Conference Finals for the second time 
time in this video. The last time we were here, we ended up making it all the way to the Stanley Cup final where we would hoist the Stanley Cup. I'm looking to do the exact same thing here, but now we have our toughest task, the Dallas Stars, a team that's currently 8-1 in the postseason. Similar to the series against the Edmonton Oilers, we've been going back and forth the entire way, and Game 5 is going to be deciding this one. Whoever's taking this one is going to have the lead in this series, and it looks like it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks. Can we close this out in Game 6 here? It doesn't look like it. Conference Finals, Game 7, this is must-see hockey. And when I say must-see hockey, I mean must-see simulation, because I'm not going to watch the entire game here. All I know is we're going to be winning because Tiga Ginla is picking up a massive goal in the third period, and we're off to the Stanley Cup Final now. Also, the first goal of the game was a shorthanded one. If Huskins doesn't pick up this goal here, we probably lose this game. So shout out to him for picking up that massive goal. So it all comes down to this, an all-Canadian rivalry matchup. The Vancouver Canucks taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm not even 100% sure if Toronto's ended their drought. It might be at 70 years at this point. Who knows? All I know is we're not going to allow them to hoist the Stanley Cup here. We're going to close out and get our second. So we're just simming the entire Stanley Cup final. We're not going to waste any time here. If we're going to lose to any team, it can't be the Toronto Maple Leafs. We just lost in five games. We didn't even put up a fight against this team. They absolutely smoked us. 7-3 to three in Game 4? No, that's tough. I don't know what I'm more disappointed about. The fact that we just lost in the Stanley Cup Final, or the fact that we lost in the Stanley Cup Final to the Toronto Maple Leafs of all teams. Like, seriously, if you're gonna lose to anyone, like, lose to, like, the Ottawa Senators, Montreal Canadiens, I mean, Ottawa actually might be worse. Lose to, like, the New York Rangers, Washington Capitals, Pittsburgh Penguins, but don't lose to the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's just not a good way to go out. Mitch Marner's leading the way. Austin Matthews, he was there as well. William Nylander's here too. So basically their entire core led the way. We allowed them to end probably a 70-year drought. I don't even know how long it is at this point. We are in the year 2030. All I know is it's been a minute since they won. And also I do want to point out Samsonov won them the Stanley Cup. That is very funny seeing as this man got sent to the AHL. But then again, the day I'm recording this, he just got called up. So yeah, maybe he's going to turn it around. Okay, so I was not expecting Cody Glass to be wanting a contract like this. I thought he was going to be looking for $7 million. We can do 3.1 for the next three years. That works for me. So although we don't have many picks in the upcoming draft here, we are going to be securing some great prospects right off the bat as we're getting a medium leap central goaltender with the 95th overall. And the amazing goaltender prospects are just going to keep on coming in here as they're going to be securing another medium lead potential but this one with the 191st overall and with the second last pick in the draft can we secure another medium lead potential goaltender here probably not but we might be able to get a low lead potential center let's see what this guy turns into low bottom six that's a great way to end the draft right there. When it comes to the re-sign phase, we really don't have to make any moves here. I will sign a couple rookies, but there is one guy that we have to bring back, and it's not even up for debate. Jordan Binnington, you were incredible for us. So here's one year at 900K. You just bring a lot of culture to this team, and without you, we probably don't even go on that deep postseason run. You showed Thornton a thing or two about a thing or two. Okay, so for some reason, even though Jordan Binnington wants 900K, he didn't accept the contract, so I'm going to offer him $1 million to come back to the team. Hopefully he returns. Also, our coach is sticking around around which is very important because that man's been holding it down for us are we going to bring back jordan bennington yes we are welcome back to the team ka so after spending basically no money during the re-sign phase it's now time to spend a bunch of money so we can give up some extensions because pedersen deline heronic they all need to be brought back so we're going to start with elias pedersen here and we're going to be looking at about 14 million for the next four years that's guaranteed to bring him back onto the team for the final season moving on over to rasmus alin we're also going to be giving him an extension here we're going to be doing 11 million for the next three seasons a contract like this is definitely going to be able to keep him around as well and it's actually the exact same amount of money as we're paying him right now so i can't complain with that deal heronic's definitely going to be a bit pricier but you know what i don't really care how much money we have to pay him. we got to keep him around for the final season so we're going to do 10.7 for the next three years so between those three guys right there we just spent 30 million dollars the rest of the players i have no clue how we're going to be bringing them back the next player that we should probably bring back is lidstein since he is playing a lot of big minutes for us we'll do five years at 6.5 million so this deal might not make a lot of sense right now we're giving up one of our bottom six pieces two first round picks and a medium lead potential goaltender and we're picking up garnett from the philadelphia flyers now he's an 84 overall has medium lead potential and he's a grinder you might be thinking why you might be thinking why in the world would you be picking up a player like this for all these assets right here it's what his contract could potentially be i really thought this would be enough to get this deal done then again we're not matching their trade block whatsoever but we are going to find a way to get this deal done okay so you could basically say we're doing a three-team trade here because i'm going to be picking up both of these guys from the Ottawa centers for two first rounders and a prospect hopefully that's enough to get this deal done okay we got both of those guys right there now let's head back over to the philadelphia flyers and get this deal done now is boquist and connor zary going to be enough to get this deal done with the philadelphia
Philadelphia Flyers. I'm going to offer them both over like that. There we go. Sometimes you just got to do a three team trade to make your life a lot easier. After making that deal, I'm going to start doing three team trades way more frequently because man was that easy. We just have to send our first rounders over to another team, get two other players, send them over to Philly and we're getting the deal done just like that. And here's the reason we're picking up Garnett. Look at this contract. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to do 2.6 for the next two seasons. that will keep him around for the rest of the rebuild here. He's an 84 overall that we're basically paying no money. He's going to be a very important piece to this team. So unfortunately, we're not going to be going three for three with Stanley Cups in the final three years, but let's just go two for two here to finish it off. Again, Le Pedersen, Seidenberg on the first line. We got Erickson, Hayton, and Zach Benson on the second. The bottom six is arguably the best in the entire league. Actually, I don't even know why I say arguably. We're the best bottom six in the entire league. Our bottom six could be the top six on some teams. The defense, absolutely incredible. No weak points here whatsoever. We can definitely work with this. Well, in between the pipes, Thornton's going to be the guy here. I mean, Jordan Bennington did drop to a 77 overall, which is not ideal. But hey, he brings a lot of culture to the team. He's a level-headed player, so we got to keep him around here. Well, Thornton, I don't know where your X factor went. I'm not really going to worry about it. You're an 86 overall. I need a bounce back year from you. He didn't necessarily have the greatest numbers in the regular season last year. And when I say not the greatest, I mean they were actually abysmal. An 8 96 and the 308. I need you to turn it around here. No, but real talk, I'm actually very disappointed we're in year number nine here and we've only won one Stanley Cup. Like, we do realize what this team looks like, right? Like, we were first place in the entire league for like five seasons in a row or something, and we won one Stanley Cup every other time, first round exit. We've gone through a lot of adversity with this team. We just got to close it out here in the final two years. Okay, so you're not going to see it, but at the halfway point, I went on a massive rant talking about how the Vancouver Canucks were a complete disappointment. This team was 500 at the 40 game mark. Now we're 40, 20, and 4 with one of the best offenses in the league. I mean, when I say one of the best, it's top five, and our defense is 2.75 goals allowed per game. Yeah, so I don't know what happened in the last 20 games, but this team definitely turned it around. And then Barrett Hayden, he's leading the way, 64 points here. Harrison 58, Seidenberg, he's got 57, Benson's got 57, and the goaltending situation here, absolutely incredible for Thornton. He's got 35 wins, 4 shots, and 916, and a 251. We're not going to talk about Binner's numbers, though. These are very disappointing. Then again, you are 38 years old, you're 76 overall with AHL starter potential. I can't really expect much more from you. Y'all just got to hear me out. We're going to trade a medium lead potential prospect, a second and fourth rounder, over to the Columbus Blue Jackets to get Rupe Hintz. It's the last dance for Rupe Hintz. He's an 88 overall. He can fill in the top six lines, I think. We're making this deal. I'm not even debating it. That's the only move we're going to make here. We picked up Rupe Hints. We're going to figure out a way to make it work. I have no clue where he's going to play on our top six. I'm not even sure if he fits on the top six, but Rupe Hints definitely can't make this team worse. Am I using incredibly flawed logic with this move right here? Absolutely. Could have I traded a lot less in order to get Rupe Hints? Of course I could have. But we don't make smart decisions around here. We just make moves. Also, the other question I have, how did we have money for Rupe Rupe Hintz. Like seriously, we just picked up $7 million and didn't give up any money, but somehow we could still afford him. Not really too sure how that worked, but you know what? Way she goes. So for what potentially could be the last dance with this team, and I don't know why I'm saying that because we're going to be competing next season. It's going to be Pedersen, Rupe Hintz, and Seidenberg on the first line. Then we're going to have Erickson, Barrett Hayton, and Zach Benson on the second line. The bottom six here is absolutely incredible. Like 85 overalls on the fourth line and 86 overall in the third. It really doesn't matter who's on the ice for this team. We're going to find a way to pick up some goals. Also, I'm just kind of curious because Rupe Hints is like 35 years old. What would you want for a contract extension? Okay, we might do this. Oh, never mind. He wants $9 million. We have $6 million to work with. For some reason, I read those numbers as the opposite. I thought we had 9.7 to work with and he wanted six. Okay, Rupe Hints, you're only going to be here for the one season. What we're going to do with our bottom six next season, I have no clue because we're actually losing a couple pieces here. Then again, how many of these guys are actually playing for us? Because I don't think he is right now. I know Alex Newhook isn't. So these two guys walking is perfectly fine. So to finish out the season, the Vancouver Canucks are going to be third in the entire league here. An absolutely disappointing year for them. 51, 25, and 6. Honestly, I don't even know what's wrong with this team. How are you not finishing first in the entire league? The standard that we set at the beginning of this video was first in the entire league every single season. Now y'all are finishing third. Absolutely disappointing. Meanwhile, the scoring on this team definitely took a step back. We don't even have anyone on this team averaging a point a game. How that's even possible, I have no clue with the amount of talent here. Someone should be picking up a point a game. Like Elias Pedersen, 71. Bro, what are you even doing out there? Meanwhile, Thornton was pretty solid. 42 wins, 5 shots, and 913 to 258. Now, 
Now, if you post these types of numbers in the postseason, we probably win a Stanley Cup. So all I'm asking is you perform at your best. Now, let's get right into the postseason here. We have the Chicago Blackhawks in the first round. Similar to the Edmonton Oilers, this team probably only has one player. It's going to be Connor Bedard. He's the only guy I'm a bit nervous about. Outside of the first game, we've been absolutely locked in defensively because in the past three games, we've only allowed three goals. So let's close it out in game number five here with a shutout. In the last four games, we allowed three goals. Yeah, our defense is on a different level right now. So I never do this, but I really got to know what Thornton did in the first round of the playoffs. A 956 and a 120. Yeah, we're definitely going to win a Stanley Cup if you continue this. No, like that's actually wild. A 956 and 120 in the first round. This man's a different beast. Now we have Connor McDavid in the second round. If you can somehow continue these numbers in the second round and shut down Connor McDavid, then you're going to go down as the greatest goaltender of all time. Now the goaltending numbers definitely haven't been as good as they were in the first round, but the first round I think was a fluke. That man had a 952 or a 956, whatever he had. He was locked in. We just won game number five here, so we have a 3-2 series lead, and we're going to close it out in game six here with a shutout. I also do want to mention the second I started doubting Thornton, he allowed two goals in the last three games and capped it off with a shutout. Thornton, I'm so sorry for doubting you you're him. So with the way the Vancouver Canucks are rolling right now, I really can't see any team stopping us. We have the Minnesota Wild in the conference finals, but I'm not even scared of them. Thornton's playing like Patrick Waugh and Marty Bordeaux combined right now. When the games get tough and we need wins, he steps up because as we know, big time players make big time plays. Right now, the conference finals have been an absolute breeze. We're smoking Minnesota. We're up 3-1 in the series and in game four, we're going to be closing it out here. I don't know why I just said game four. It was actually game five. We're winning this one 5-3. to three. The goaltending wasn't nearly as good in the conference finals here but hey the offense finally woke up after two series of doing absolutely nothing and now we're in the stanley cup final for the second year in a row but this is going to be our toughest task yet. The number one seeded Detroit Red Wings taking on the number three seeded Vancouver Canucks. But I think at the end of the day, the Vancouver Canucks are a better team than the Detroit Red Wings. So far through the postseason, when the offense just isn't clicking, Thornton stands on his head. He makes a bunch of big saves, picks up a couple shutouts, and keeps us in the series. But then when Thornton takes a step back and he's not as elite as he normally is, then the offense just picks up five or six goals in the game, and then that will be more than enough to help us win. But if we can get this team running on all cylinders, the goaltending looking fantastic, and the offense being absolutely elite, then there's no way the Detroit Red Wings can stop us. So enough talking, let's go ahead, simulate the entire series here and watch the Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup. And right now, things are looking good for us. We went to game seven, probably should have jumped into game seven, but it really doesn't matter because the Vancouver Canucks are taking down the Detroit Red Wings and we're Stanley Cup champions. I should really stop simulating all seven games in the final round. Like I should have jumped into game seven here, but hey, who really cares? We won the Stanley Cup. Now I'm not really too sure who's the most valuable player to this team. Like Elias Pedersen, 24 points, Zach Benson, 23, Seaton Briggs picking up 21. But what am I talking about? Without Thornton, we're not winning a Stanley Cup here. 16 wins, two shots, and 917 to 252. But you know what matters most? Jordan Bennington's getting one more Stanley Cup before he retires. 76 overall, Jordan Bennington came into the postseason for one game. He faced 18 shots. He made 18 saves. He was absolutely perfect in the 32 minutes he played. So Jordan Bennington, congrats on one more Stanley Cup and congrats on retirement because I refuse to believe that you're going to be returning next season. I mean, we're definitely not bringing you back, but I've refused to believe you get a job with any NHL team at a 76 overall. And to celebrate winning a Stanley Cup here, Korzak, here's $4 million for the next two seasons. We'll bring you back for one last run. Meanwhile, with the rest of these players, we're probably letting them walk. Unless the salary cap jumps up quite a bit, then we'll try to bring Pakolzin back. But unfortunately, I'm not 100% sure if that's going to be able to happen. So the salary cap jumped up like $3 million, so we have more than enough money to bring Pakolzin back. We're basically going to be rocking the exact same team next season, except for Rupe Hintz. He's going to be leaving the team because we don't have money to bring him back. But other than Rupe Hintz, it's the exact same team. So I decided since we just won a Stanley Cup, I'm going to show you every single draft pick I make here. We're going to be starting with our first pick, which is going to be in the seventh round, 224th overall. Not really too sure who we're going to be drafting here, but you know what? We're going to go out on a limb here. We're going to select this goaltender right here who might have medium elite potential. He's a fringe starter. So those are all of our draft picks for this season. Let's get ready for next year. As I've said a handful of times so far in the re-sign phase, we're not bringing any of these guys back. We just don't have the cap space for them. Meanwhile, Jordan Bainton retired. Show to that absolute legend. So we really don't have any money to work with, but we do need a backup goaltender. So I'll give this guy 1.8 million for the next two seasons. This is going to be the only move we make because we don't have any money to work with. And we do have the entire team coming back. So I mean, why change anything up? I say that like our team wasn't showing signs of declining in the first 40 games of the season. But you know what? We just won a Stanley Cup. Although we lost Rupe Hints, the entire core is coming back. 
I'm confident that this team can perform at their best. So it turns out we actually do have to make one move before we get into next season. We're going to acquire a King from the St. Louis Blues. He has one year left on his contract at $1 million. Basically, we just need somebody for the fourth line. Yes, I'm giving up a lot here, but it's the final season. It doesn't really matter what we have to give up. We're going to win a Stanley Cup no matter what. So here we go. It's the final season of the 10-year rebuild. We already know what this team's looking like. Again, Lump, Pedersen, Seenberg on the first line. Erickson, Barrett, Hayton, Zach Benson on the second. The bottom six is better than most of the top sixes in the league. We basically have no weaknesses here. When it comes to our defense, that's incredibly strong as well with Rasmus Dahlin and Hironik leading the way. Our next two pairings might not have a bunch of superstars, but you know what? They fill the role. They do exactly what they have to, and they help us compete for Stanley Cup, so why change it up? And even if our second and third pairing isn't the best in the world we do have an 89 overall thornton in between the pipes he's got x factors now at 24 years old he's about to have a career year and lead us to a 60 win season so enough yapping here let's go ahead and simulate the final season of the rebuild and watch this team win one more stanley cup so i guess you could say we're a better team this time around second in the entire league only two points back of the edmonton oilers 50 26 and 5 with a great offense and a great defense like usual i guess some things never change with the vancouver canucks and another thing that doesn't change is the top scores on this team. It's the same guys like usual, but also King. I got to give a shout to this man. I think he's playing fourth line minutes for us and he picked up 50 points. Meanwhile, the goaltending situation, that's what I am concerned about. Thornton, 40 wins, 6 shots, a 902 and a 303. You better step it up when the postseason comes around because I can't have you falling apart. Especially since we didn't finish first in our divisions, so that means we're going to be taking a great team on in the first round here as we have the Seattle Kraken. And even if we can get past Seattle, more than likely, we're going to have to take on the Edmonton Oilers in the second. So I think this might be one of our toughest postseason runs. So far, it's been a pretty tough series for us as we split the first four games. But in game five, it's a massive 3-1 win for us. So we're looking to close this one out in game six here and ideally not go to game seven and luckily we're going to be closing this one out and we're off to the second round but now it's time to get serious the number one seed in the entire league taking on the number two the vancouver canucks taking on the edmonton oilers this matchup could really go either way but you know what i have a lot of faith in the vancouver canucks and those edmonton oilers they got nothing outside of mcdavid and the edmonton oilers are just complete frauds we have a 3-1 series lead and we're going to close this one out in game five here a 2-1 win in overtime an absolute breeze for us also how did the seattle kraken put up a bigger fight than the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton was the best team in the entire league, but when the playoffs came around, this team just showed that they're a bunch of frauds. Also, we're taking on Minnesota in the conference finals. I don't think it's necessary that I go and take a look at the playoff tree because we already know we're taking on Minnesota. Over in the Eastern Conference, it's Pittsburgh versus Philly. That's a great rivalry matchup. Let's see what's going to happen in this series. But unfortunately, things aren't looking too good for us. We're currently down 3 1 this series. We got to spark a massive comeback here. And that's going to start with a massive win in game five. We're taking that one 5 to 4. Can we force a game seven here with a win in game six? Yes, we can. A massive shutout from Thornton is going to be forced in game seven here. And we have a chance of making it to our third straight stage. Stanley Cup final. So here we go in the most important game of the video. I'm going to simulate the entire game and we're coming up huge in the third period. Five unanswered. Wow. I did not think we were going to be winning this game, but here we are picking up five straight in the third period. Nah, this team stepped up when they needed to. The big time players were making big time plays and we're off to the Stanley Cup final. So here we go. Our third straight Stanley Cup final in three years here. Not only are we looking to complete the repeat here, but we're also looking to win a Stanley Cup in our final season of the rebuild that would be the perfect way to cap it off so enough yapping let's simulate through the first four games of this series and ideally complete a quick sweep here we're definitely not completing the sweep as we drop the first two but we're responding with two massive wins here can we close it out in game five here i don't know why i said close it out but we are taking the lead in this series but now we're going to close it out in game six here 10 to 1 in game six closing out to win the second stanley cup in a row for this team no that's wild 10 to 1 in game six yeah that's a tough way to go out so I think we really need to have a discussion here. I finished as the number one seed in the league for four straight seasons. We lost in the first round in three of those seasons and won one Stanley Cup. The past three years, we didn't finish number one in the entire league. We made it to three straight Stanley Cup finals, winning two of them. How does that make any sense? When we were the best team in the league, we lost in the first round every single year. The second we weren't the best team in the entire league, we started performing in the postseason and won two straight Stanley Cups, on top of making it to three straight Stanley Cup finals. Sometimes it just doesn't doesn't make sense. But Thornton, you were that man. 16 wins, two shouts, a 926 and a 220. If you made it to the end of this video, comment Thornton. Because without this man, we're not winning any Stanley Cups. I mean, that's a lie because Thatcher Demko did win us one. But without Thornton, we're not making it to three straight Stanley Cup finals. And we're not winning these final two Stanley Cups. I think it's safe to say he was the most valuable player to our team. 